Hello, divine beings. It is your girl, Abiyala Akani. I am the founder of the non-performative online yoga school, IA, and I'm happy to be here with you for today's video. As you can see by the title, we are going to be discussing how to remove the veil of control in your life and in your business through the embodiment of the priestess archetype, which is one of the six archetypes within the divine feminine. Now this video is specifically for high achieving women in business who are running their own business, who are self-employed, who are entrepreneurs, or who are working in corporate America, but have very demanding careers and have found themselves experiencing deep unfulfillment in these achievements and the work that they do that they thought would bring them the agency and the deep satisfaction. And instead, now they're feeling extremely unsatisfied and unfulfilled. If that is you, then you are in the right place and this video is definitely for you. But before we get into that, you might be wondering why I'm even qualified to speak about this. And the reason that is, is because I've been where you are. I started my yoga business over eight years ago. And during that time, I was really, really obsessed with achieving and growing my business and making sure that I was perceived in a certain way. And that controlled my business for a long time. After I finished one thing, it was all about moving on to the next achievement, the next quest, the next big thing. There was never any spaciousness or time for me to rest or just to simply be and to live slow. And as a result, I found myself deeply dissatisfied with all of those achievements. I never had a moment to celebrate them, but even in the celebration, they never felt like they were giving me the fulfillment that I once thought they would. And as a result, I experienced deep burnout to the point where my soul itself felt fatigued. And I went through a long bout of depression for several years and really high functioning anxiety in my day to day life. It was until I really began to find fulfillment outside of the things that I do. I started to really expand my identity beyond what I do. And that is when I finally started to feel content and satisfied with my life. And since that day, I've been so inspired to support other women, particularly women of color out there who are experiencing the same thing. Now with that being said, I am relaunching my Divine Feminine Yoga Workshop this fall, specifically in September. It's been seven years since I've launched this workshop, mainly because I went through years of extreme burnout and I had no idea how to really embody my Divine Feminine because I was overly active in resistance in my divine masculine. Now that I've really been able to embody this work and to slow down and to find that sense of fulfillment, I'm super excited to bring this back and support other women of color who are experiencing this level of burnout and exhaustion. If that is you, pause the video Head to the link in my description box and put your email in there so that you're notified as soon as registration opens on August 29th. I would love to have you join myself and other women of color in this live online workshop. And I know it's going to be the sacred pause. So many of you have probably been desiring for a long time. Once you do that, unpause the video and I'll meet you right back here. Now, the priestess archetype is one of the six archetypes within the divine feminine. Before I even go into that, when it comes to the divine feminine, it's really been co-opted as of late by a lot of language and ideals around attracting a partner. Now, what I want to get clear before we even start is that the divine feminine is about so much more than attracting or appealing to a partner. And the reason why so many folks have kind of co-opted the divine feminine and are using it in that way to appeal to a mate 
is because they discern that the Divine Feminine is extremely powerful. Everybody knows the power of the Divine Feminine because it is the force in which we create life. Life not only in the form of birthing children, but life infinitely in all forms. Men, in particular, know that. That's why they love being around feminine women, because women who are in their Divine Feminine have the ability to create life with them and for them, to breathe life into anything and everything that they want to do. What happens is that us women do not understand the power of our Divine Feminine. We don't understand that we are the vortex of creation and the myriad of life that we can create for ourselves and for other people. So the way I approach the Divine Feminine and the way that I invite you to begin to perceive it is to discern that the Divine Feminine is for yourself first. It's not about another person or a man or this and that. It's for you first and creating life for yourself. In particular, the Divine Feminine is about discerning the power of receptivity and maintaining and sustaining it in the face of external stimuli that would have you contract into resistance, which is the opposite of the Divine Feminine. It's even the opposite of masculine. It's just resistant. Nothing is moving. There's no life in that. So when we get into exploring the Divine Feminine in our life, in our business, the goal is to receive the power of the Divine Feminine within our own vessels and embody these archetypes so that we can create life. But finding that embodiment for yourself first. Now the priestess archetype is ultimately intuitive awareness. It's the lens through which we are perceiving our external world, or you could say it's the lens through which you are perceiving your life and your business. This is extremely important because however you are perceiving your life, your business, your external world is going to determine a lot of how you navigate through it. Now, when we think about clear perception, clear perception is created from discerning or understanding the origins of your thoughts and the patterning of your own mind. Now, that is how clear perception is created. That is how we remove the veils of the priestess so that that lens is very sharp. If you are interpreting your external world from the patterning of your mind that is strung to different traumas and triggers that you have not unveiled, that lens is going to be very veiled and it's going to be very small and it's going to be very contracted. We tend to sometimes think that our perception, how we see things is accurate just by itself. That's not necessarily the case. Accurate knowing comes from discerning the root cause of your thoughts and understanding the patterning of your mind. That is what creates a clear perception. If we take this back to yoga, yoga looks at the mind as this like racing, running thing that we are not necessarily meant to trust the mind and the thoughts because they are constantly intrusively coming and going. They were created that way. They always are going. The mind has its own pattern based on our beliefs and based on our traumas and our triggers. And that determines the lens through which we see the world through. That determines the lens that this priestess is looking through. So what we want to do is to really begin to study the patterning of our mind and our thoughts. Take a moment to stop and think, why am I thinking this? Why am I feeding my thoughts with this? Or having a conversation with your own traumas and your triggers to determine the root cause of where those come from so they're not being duplicated in the patterning of how you're thinking. Doing so begins to remove the veils from your perception so that you can see from a more accurate place now, the less awareness we have of the patterning of our mind, of where our beliefs are coming from, 
and or the root cause of our traumas and our triggers, the more veiled the priestess becomes. And the more veiled the priestess becomes, the more resistance we start to walk in. Because we are creating action from a place of lack of clarity within our mind. I don't understand why I have this trauma or trigger or why I have this belief. And so we start to create actions that match that perception, even though it's not accurate. So what that can look like is resistance. Now, resistance is not just I'm pushing away, I'm stopping something from coming towards me. Resistance is also pushing and forcing things and control is also a form of resistance. Now, if we are using control, which is a form of resistance in our life and or in our business, to filter how things are coming to us or to really manipulate certain things to make us feel safe, it's very, very challenging to consciously create from this place. And what I mean by that, it's very challenging to consciously create life from this place. So one of the things that I determined in my business when I was going through that bout of depression was my focus on controlling my life, making sure that I was constantly chasing these achievements to really control how people were perceiving me, to show that I was good enough, to show that I was a badass bitch, to show that I was incredibly wise and smart and all-knowing. My need to control that perception, my need to control so much of that in my business was from a deep-seated belief of inadequacy and a belief that my achievements would eventually bring the fulfillment and the satisfaction that I had been looking for to feel like I was enough. And so, as a result, I kept controlling my life tooth and nail, overachieving, over-efforting, which pushing and forcing are forms of resistance to create the life that I thought would bring me the fulfillment I was seeking. What I didn't realize is that I was not creating. All I was doing was producing, and I was producing more and more and more and more. In that resistance, in that place of control, there was no conscious creating. I couldn't consciously create anything because I was moving from a place of unawareness where I couldn't perceive or truly see that the belief I was doing all this work from was from a place of inadequacy. And none of those achievements would ever make me feel adequate enough or make me feel worthy enough or make me feel good enough. Fulfillment is not found in the achievements that we do. It's found in the daily, often mundane rituals and practices that we are utilizing to serve ourselves from a deep place of knowing what we need. And I didn't discern what I needed. And so, as a result, kept efforting and efforting and forcing myself to achieve more and more and more. Now, what I wanted to do was move to a place of conscious creation. I wanted to consciously create the life that I wanted, and I kept getting further and further away from it. And as a result, I kept feeling less and less fulfilled, and it got me really angry. Why does this damn thing feel like a mirage? It feels like the more achievements and things that I accomplish, the further and further it gets from me, instead of coming closer and closer, until I discerned that, hey, sis, slow down. It's not about the achievements. Put down the pencil, put down the pen, put down the notepad. 
Take a moment just to be with yourself and to start to ask the questions of why am I doing this this way? And that's what I began to do. I asked myself, why am I pushing myself this hard? And in doing so, began to remove the veils off of my priestess archetype so that I could see into the why behind what I was doing. That type of awareness came slowly, but each time I did it, I was removing the veils from the priestess so that I could have that intuitive awareness to see into how to really consciously create life, how to really consciously create the life that I wanted by servicing and meeting my own needs. Now the priestess archetype is so powerful because it has that intuitive awareness and the more unveiled it becomes the more sensitive it becomes the more veiled it is the more desensitized it becomes and it's that sensitivity that we want within our priestess a clear perception and perceive things so clearly that we can begin to consciously create from a place of intuitive awareness like that is the chef's kiss. And that is what's available to you as you slowly unveil your priestess to yourself. Now I know that was a lot and I'm sure there's a lot of comments and questions about this. So if you have any comments and your questions about the priestess archetype or any of the concepts that I just shared, definitely let me know in the comments section. And I will thoroughly answer them because I know that these are very beefy concepts and they're very different concepts from how the Divine Feminine is currently perpetuated and or taught. You are a vortex of creation and you have the ability to create life in all forms. I want you to know this and know that if you're feeling extreme burnout, and or feeling like you need to control every aspect of your life and in your business, there is space for you to slowly release the reins, to find greater fulfillment, and to even find a greater identity beyond what you're doing. Make sure to put your email in the description box below for the Divine Feminine Yoga Workshop so that you're alerted as soon as registration opens. I look forward to hearing your all's thoughts on today's video, and I'll be coming back with you real soon with more divine feminine archetypes to support you in your life and in your business. Don't forget to follow your girl on the gram at yoga by Biala, as well as following my online yoga school at ia.well. Continue to be well, and I'll see y'all real soon.